Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us in our latest edition of Teed Up. This is a segment where we talk to our customers and some of the top golf instructors um, about the V1 platform, how they use V1, and you know some best practices and moving forward. Today, we have Paul Woodbury from Florence Country Club. We've asked him to come on to the show today because of his extensive junior golf program there at Florence. Um, so, Paul, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your junior golf program? Yeah, well, um, thanks for having me on. We um, Florence Country Club has definitely been very supportive and very uh, encouraging of junior golf, and so we've had um, we've been fortunate enough to build a facility out on the driving range where we have a hitting bay full of technology with with V one, and um, we put a locker room on there, hangout area, putting green, so lots of fun stuff there. But a big, um, a big drive by the membership, lots of support to, uh, to grow the game of golf. And we know that uh, juniors are uh, the next generation, they're the future. Yeah, it's all about growing the game and, you know, juniors are, you know, are the future of the game. So we've got to have them involved. And it's That's great a club like Florence, you know, gets behind the program and, and really helps move it along. Um, what are some of the tips about keeping your parents involved, keeping... Um, the parents being part of the program, you know, but also not overstepping in a way that they get in the way of the kids having fun. Yeah, no doubt. So we've created some, a couple different um, programs. So we've got a beginner series. We've got some player development programs um, from intermediate to elite and different criteria they meet through state rankings and, and other scenarios. But um, yeah, it's, um, Going through there, we um, we definitely interact a lot. We're very upfront with the goals that we're trying to achieve through a certain month or two, and um, realistically, making sure that everything is videoed, stored. We collect upfront data. We've got videos up front, and with um, with that being said, I mean that goes right into um, doing a great job summarizing their lessons. And that's where we do all these lesson videos where um, we summarize the end of it and make sure that they're building on top of everything. The, again, the, the parents um, will get a copy of this email It'll, um, so they can watch it. And the nice part there is when I talk to parents, they're saying the exact same language that and the exact same stuff that we're talking about um, with the junior and myself in the lesson. And unfortunately, all the parents can't come to all their lessons. So um, it's a nice way to keep them involved and engaged. And um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's great. It's, it's, it's great to be able to keep the, the parent involved in what's going on. So when the, you know, cause when you're not around, it's that parent that's at the driving range with them out on the golf course with them. You want to make sure you're, you know, speaking the same voice um, on what you're working on and what they're wanting to uh, teach their, their junior as well. So I think that's great. Um, now, when you do send a voiceover, do you do in lesson voiceovers or do you just usually do it as a wrap up at the end, um, at the end of a lesson? Yeah, so um, every now and then if there's something specific that um, they really liked or they had a great feel on and we saw some immediate success, then we might stop there and do a, um, a quick voiceover and we'll title it differently. Um, it's one thing I do like to do in the um, in section there is just kind of title it for them. And then um, most of the time it's a summary at the end and I will say the, um, the best thing that, um, that I feel like we do is we actually have the player make sure they can verbalize it and summarize it into the video. So now all of a sudden the parent is hearing it exactly from the player. When the player listens to it, he hears himself talking about it. And again, from juniors, it's um, how many times have you picked up a kid um, from school and say, hey, what'd you learn today? Nothing. What's going on? Uh, nothing. So when we can give a summary lesson, now all of a sudden that's in their voice, the parent knows they were engaged. As an instructor, more importantly, I know that they're engaged and they're able to um, conceptualize it. They're able to um, relay the information. Then they're going to retain more of it. 
that's awesome. I've you know, never heard of having this student almost giving the, the voiceover back to themselves. It's definitely a way to make sure that they're understanding um, what you've spoken and what you've talked about. Uh, and it's, it's great that they can listen to it over and over again, because in an in-person situation, when we're only retaining about 30% of what we hear, um, now you're making sure that they, they understand everything that you spoke about. That's, that's awesome. That's right. And then with the app, they're right there. I encourage them before every practice session, they need to watch their last lesson video. It's more about, it makes the practice time more quality, more productive. It's great. Great. Um, so to switch up a little bit now, especially with juniors and social media, such a huge role. Um, how does social media work with junior golf program? Not only them in, in putting their swings and, get, and putting their information on social media, but also them going on social media and getting tips, whether it's they're talking to or looking at swings or swing tips from another um, pro PGA professional, or, you know, are they just out there, you know, looking for information to get better? Yeah, absolutely. So um, social media is is huge, not only um, with everybody in the world, but the juniors especially. And so the juniors actually um, got me to create the social media account when we were out here. And it's been a great thing. They follow along. They can tell you everything I've posted, what's going on, what what each player is working on. They're like, oh, well, you, um, we see he's, he's struggling with a similar thing or man, he's the opposite of I am, that I am. So they are watching for sure. Um, and then inside of that, I always try to make sure I'm, I'm a sucker for a good uh, motivational quote. So uh, I always try and throw some of those um, positive encouragements in there. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what's, you know, one of like a before and after story, maybe one of your juniors that, you know, you know, huge, you know, improvement quickly, or, you know, that story that you go back to, that's just like, you know, really hits home, you know, as a golf instructor, why we do it. Yeah. So there's so many cool stories um, of players similar to myself. Um, I could can name 20 plus um, pretty quickly elite juniors that come in and they're like, you know, I've just, I, I've got to hit it further and being able to break it down and watch them conceptualize it and say, okay, here is my path. I actually can do this. And if they're not getting enough vertical forces, it's like, well, you know, we go in and we can prescribe them a workout. Um, we can go through um, the advances TPIs helped out. The, um, it's actually helped the training of understanding velocity and, um, and forces. So giving that player that pathway is is so crucial um just most notably uh, i've got a player here lucas turner who started out around 90 mile an hour club speed and um good good player and um he's like I, I just don't get it and so when we got him on these uh pressure mats he's not generating any vertical forces he's been hitting the gym he's working on it he's now being able to create two times his body weight and the other day he um, he hit 108.5 miles an hour club head speed. And now all of a sudden he's competitive and he's got an opportunity to have a really big spring. So super excited. And even um, players who um, who think they have some speed, you've got um, like a Mason Slaughter was 108 to 110. Now all of a sudden is swinging at 122 miles an hour. Just understanding how to maximize uh, ground movements. And so be putting myself in their shoes, it's like, well, to be able to quantify something so clearly is um, and create such a straightforward, clear path to success is, uh, is all you can ask for. That's awesome. That's great. So just one last question. We always like to finish on something about yourself. So as a junior golfer growing up, you know, everyone has that one story that's like just that sticks in their mind. What's that one story for you as junior golfer where you like really felt like you fell in love with the game? Yeah, so for me, it's um, it goes back to um, when I wasn't any good and um, all my both sets of my grandparents played golf. And um, man, it's just the stories of uh, going on, going to visit family over the holidays. And it wasn't. Um, Hey, are we playing golf? It's like everybody arguing over what the groups are. And um, to me, that's where it was like, 
it, it was just always such a passion in my family. And um, it's just a game you can play for life. So that's, that's really um, the answer to it. That's great. I always think, you know, we talk about all the greatest golf courses in the world and all the tournaments and tournament success we have, but it really well, it seems like it comes back down to, you know, who you play with, whether it's, you know, best friends, best family, you know, golf course is secondary compared to uh, the other three people in the group. So that, that's awesome. Thanks for your time, Paul. Thank you.